Yu-Gi-Oh! and Food Wars. Two anime that most people would never even put in the same sentence. Which is something I used to never do. Until watching this week's Food Wars season finale, and also wanting to think about something to talk about with Yu-Gi-Oh!, I realized something. These two shows are in a very strange way the same thing. They both are trying to do the same thing, they both have similar ways of going about it, but one, Food Wars, is one of the most popular animes in the world right now, and the other, Yu-Gi-Oh!, is, seems to be struggling just to sort of keep its remaining fan base on board for how it works. And uh, today, I'd like to sort of really talk about how this happened. Because ultimately, these two shows are the same thing. And many of you may be saying to yourself right now, Oh, come on, Yu-Gi-Oh! is about a card game and the fate of the world, and it's ultimately just a commercial for that card game, while Food Wars is about cooking and it's low stakes and it's slice-of-life comedy high school stuff, whatever. Believe it or not, these two things are ultimately trying to do the same thing. Basically, both Yu-Gi-Oh! and Food Wars are trying to sell you something. Yu-Gi-Oh! wants to sell you a card game, but, you, but Food Wars wants to sell you cooking. Smart cooking. Actual, like, super epic cooking. I know that's a weird way to put it, but it did follow me on this. I'm going somewhere with this. And both ultimately are the same sort of structure. Both of these are basically battle shonens that don't actually feature punching or anything like that. One uses cards, the other uses food in pretty similar tournament 1v1 style settings. But again, why is one better? Well, let's start off with the obvious thing, the protagonists. Yu-Gi-Oh!'s current protagonist is Yusaku, who conceptually is a very good idea for a character. Unlike the other Yu-Gi-Oh! heroes who are very straightforward, good guy archetypes, Yusaku is a lot more different. He's darker than the other ones. He has a bad past, he's out for revenge, he doesn't really care about human life at times. He's just in it for himself. That is a very interesting, unique way to take this franchise. Unfortunately, it appears that Yu-Gi-Oh! also looked at the last two protagonists and how they had very polarizing receptions and have decided to take all these interesting concepts and put them further the wayside for a very generic, boring, personality-less character who ultimately, the only purpose of him is to seem cool. He's got a cool design, or at least what Konami thinks is cool. He always wins. He always figures everything out. Everyone always gawks at how awesome he is. And that is really where the character fails. He just feels hollow. He just feels like something an advertising representative thought of. And everything interesting about him is taken away because he's never humanized. He's just made to seem perfect. Let, this is a big contrast to Food Wars, which has Soma. And at first glance, and a lot of people who don't love Food Wars as much as I do, have a big problem with Soma because they feel he's just a standard, wants to be the best shonen protagonist. Well, that's to an extent kind of the point. But what makes Food Wars great is that it takes standard shonen-y type stuff and presents it in an interesting way and does interesting stuff with it. When we first meet Soma, he's not being amazing. He's not being perfect. He actually loses a cooking contest to his father, and then it's just played off for fun. That's the thing. It instantly humanizes the character and humanizes the universe. This is a world where food is just important to them as it is to us. This is different from Yu-Gi-Oh!, where a children's card game is the fucking most important thing in the world. <laughs> The thing is, Food Wars brings you in by humanizing everything immediately. Soma and his dad then have really funny chibi scenes, even though their designs would state they wouldn't normally do that in this kind of show. Then we see F Soma's next most important trait, and that is his desire for innovation, his want to try new things, to change. Maybe those things won't work, i.e. serving his friend squid that is covered in peanut butter, but he still tries. He wants to make a mark for himself and be different and be unique. And if he fails, well, he'll just get up next time and he'll be a little bit better at it. We also get a goofy scene of, like, the squid trying to enter the girl's hoo-ha, which is great because, again, it also really gears us up for what sort of show we're in store for. But then when we get to the climax of the first episode, we've gone and we've sewn what ultimately is the best part about Soma, and that is his intelligence. And, unlike Yu-Gi-Oh!, which just has Yusaku be permanent, uh, perfect from the beginning, 
we actually see Soma's intelligence at play. Instead of him just pulling every random piece of bullshit out of his hat, and we never had any reason to believe that was there, we methodically watch Soma do everything he has to do for a dish. You see him cut food, you see him set up ingredients, put everything in plate, do all this, do all that to serve a meal. And more importantly, he's in a situation where he has to really think, and he has to think differently. He is challenged, and he is put in a hard spot. And that hard spot was made understandable to us, the viewer, by very simple things like, you can't use meat, and you have a time limit, and I'm against you anyways. These are things the audience can relate to. Not everyone can really relate to the idea of playing a card game against a terrorist, but we can all understand the desire to have to create, to have to be ingenuity, innovation. This is what makes Soma really cool, is that you watch that intelligence play out in screen. So much so, when the show actually goes ahead and just tells you what just happened, which it will inevitably have to, you feel like you just really learned something and that you could do this too, because it was all put in front of you. And more importantly, Soma explains that he got where he was by years of practice, by making mistakes, by failing. Going back to the beginning of the episode, now it makes it all feel worth it because it all means something to him in the long run. This extends to our side characters as well. A side character's job ultimately is to support the protagonist. But in Yu-Gi-Oh, where this has taken the form in a bunch of separate people who are very just sort of come in and out at the writer's convenience... And these characters also have more interesting backstories than Yusaku, so I'm rooting for them more anyways, but then they're hardly in it. This is a problem because if I'm rooting more for characters who barely matter, I'm not going to get that into the story. Food Wars, however, has a very colorful cast of very well-designed, very likable, very fun characters. The show will often introduce a character by setting them up in a cliched role, and will then, like with Soma, start humanizing them almost immediately. Like the Aldini brothers, or like Megumi, or like everyone in Polar Star Dorm. It would have been so easy to just make it that everyone at the school is just a rich prick, and Soma's gonna show them all what real cooking is. Kinda like what happened with Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. But, the thing that makes Soma great is that immediately he starts to realize how not perfect he thinks he is. When he gets to the school, he's like, I came from a real cooking background, man. I know what to do, and you're all just going to lose to me. No, there's not the typical big epic loss at the beginning like I thought there was going to be when I started the show. Soma realizes that he's not so perfect, and everyone else is a lot better than he originally valued them, just by seeing everybody. When he sees his Polar Star dorm mates and how they're constantly trying to try new ideas and how dedicated they are to learning about their food and their craft and their specialties and how knowledgeable they are, it really starts showing him that there's more to the world of cooking than what he thought there was. There's more than his own perspective and everyone learns at their own pace and everyone has the right to be just as good as he thinks he is. This also takes the form when he loses the first time. Yeah, four episodes in, his doormate, the older guy whose name escapes me, Ishiki, is just like, let's have a little food competition. And Soma sees the level these people are cooking at, and he gains a respect for everybody. And you see, as he meets each new character, he sort of learns just how much bigger the world of food is, and how much he still needs to learn. This is important for character development because it means that you're putting the character's failings first and what they need to succeed at. Then you also get Megumi, who, between every Yu-Gi-Oh! and every other character in Food Wars, Megumi is best girl. Megumi starts out as this very weak, very person who's struggling. And though she gets stronger from meeting Soma, Soma learns from her as well. He gets to see her grow and get stronger and gains a respect for her. Again, this is a big contrast to Yu-Gi-Oh! where half the time Yusaku doesn't care about anything going on around him. This is what makes the characters in Food Wars great, because you get to watch everyone grow, everyone develops, and even characters who aren't that important still get their moments to be memorable and lovable and unique. And this comes in great contrast when you meet the season, our first real big villain, uh, Evil Dad Guy. <laughs> That's ultimately just what he is. But what makes this get this villain great is that first up, that color scheme is genius. Where everyone has these bright color palettes that are just very pleasing to the eye, he's this very creepy gray and darkness and unlikable. And a big portion of what makes this guy hateable is that he's not that far apart from reality. 
First up, ultimately, what is he? He's an abusive father. And yeah, it was a little annoying that ADD, who was built up as a villain and sort of the antagonist, it just turns out she's just a bully because of an abusive parent, which is a very common cliche nowadays. Yeah, that's a little annoying. But ultimately, what makes this guy interesting is that he is rooted in reality. There are abusive parents out there, obviously, and there are a lot of stories of parents who are part of these, like, very rich families, who are part of these big specialty families where a lot of pressure is put on the kids to follow in footsteps to treat the kids basically just sort of like soldiers in this respect. This is what, again, this guy is rooted in reality, and even his plan is... It's, it's a class warfare struggle, the desire to make everything for the rich and the elite and everything. These are things that people can relate to, and they're presented in a very real, relatable way. Again, Yu-Gi-Oh! has interesting concepts at play right now, but they're just concepts. When it comes to what's actually happening, it's still just the generic crap that they've been doing for 20 years, just because it's what they think works. There's no real desire to try anything new or unique in the same way Food Wars is. And then that brings us to the ultimate factor, the one thing that really makes things go round in this, how they actually present what they're selling. The Yu-Gi-Oh! of Reigns duels, some are interesting, but a lot are stagnant. For all the reasons I brought up about not getting to properly see characters' intelligence, but ultimately because the duels just aren't very relatable. A lot of the cards just feel pointless, there's not a lot of emphasis put on actual strategy from anybody, and when a character does play a strong deck like Aoi with Trick Stars or Go with Gokis, they're kind of just written away so everything can be on the main character. In Food Wars, all the food is brought to a level understandable to the average person, and each character is shown to have a specialty and how good they are at that specialty. A lot of Shokugekis, the outcome is fairly obvious. It's most likely going to be Soma or whoever we're rooting for in that scene is going to win, or whoever makes sense for the plot progression. But because so much emphasis is put on how intelligent everyone is, and how the food was prepared, and how everything works, a lot of times I forget who is most likely supposed to win and just be like, it could be this guy, it could be this person, it could be here, who, 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 who? That's why Food Wars is genius, and that's why to me, Food Wars is one of the smartest animes ever made, and one of the best. And I'm not alone in this. Every time Food Wars has been out, it's been one of the most popular animes of its season, and that's because a lot of people recognize the effort put into it. They respond to the experimentation, they respond to the uniqueness. Food Wars is everything I love about anime. Something that is different, something that makes me want to be interested in something I never thought I'd be into before. And that's why I love it. And I love Yu-Gi-Oh! too. And I want Yu-Gi-Oh! to learn from Food Wars because clearly learning from whoever is pulling the strings at that show is not working. And what do you think? In the comments section below, give me what you think about Food Wars, what you think about Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm sure some people are going to be like, you're biased towards Food Wars a bit, but there's a reason for that. And that's what we were just talking about. And as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and let's hope Yu-Gi-Oh! does sort of take some hints from all this. And also can't wait for next season of Food Wars. I hope it's not too far away. <laughs>